Okay, so with high power drawings, the many of the principles that we are going to use are the same as what we um, were doing up to this point. Namely, uh, we are using smooth continuous lines. We are trying to maintain the proportions of what we see to make sure that our representation, our drawing of what we see it represents what we see. Um, and we make sure that this time we draw cellular details. So the difference being that what we are doing now is we are drawing individual cells, but not only that, at high power, we need to draw individual cells, we need to draw, or we need to make sure that the arrangement of those cells reflects what we see in our uh, actual sample. And we need to make sure that any subcellular structures that we can see, because we are now viewing this sample at high power, any subcellular structures that we can see, we also um, uh, represent those as well. So in addition to what we've been doing up to this point, we are drawing cells, we are drawing subcellular structures, and we are main, main, making sure that the arrangement of the cells in that tissue is also represented. Okay, so I will do the drawing, and if there's any points to note, I will mention that as we go along. Um, so what I will do, I will make a new layer here. Now you can do this with pencil, um, it is allowed, but you have to make sure that any guidelines that you have, you do remove. Okay, so I'm gonna just roughly, just to make sure that my drawing represents what is actually here, I am going to use some guidelines to indicate, so to make sure that what I draw, I do represent accurately, okay? So what I've done here is just a little bit of guidelines just to make sure that the cells that I, or the scale of the thing that I draw is uh, proportional uh, to what I see. Um, and so we begin, so that's my guide layer. And I'll just drop back down to here and then I can, I can remove those guidelines later. So in fact, what I can do is just So I've now completed the drawing part of it. Uh, what I will do is at this point, I will remove my guidelines. So you would use your rubber to remove those lines. And I will now label it and then we'll reconvene and I will talk you through the major things in the drawing after I've done that. Okay guys, we reconvene now with the labeling of the diagram done and the drawing done. And I'll just walk you through a few of the decision making uh, steps that I went through in making this drawing. So first things first, visible structures we drew so I could see the cellulose wall here. So I have represented that as such on the other side. Remember, we used the guidelines to make sure that the proportions of the drawing were maintained as far as we could maintain them. Uh, next, moving down, so we have the palisade, uh, sorry, the parenchyma cells here, or the palisade parenchyma cells up here, um, represented on the other side here. Okay, and I know it's not so clear from the diagram, but we this is why we have to sometimes apply what we know. So it wasn't too clear from the image where the chloroplasts were compared to the cell wall, kind of looks like they're in the same place. But we know that chloroplasts are within, should be within the confines of the cell wall. So that is how I've drawn them in my diagram here. So uh, the chloroplasts are these little dots inside or these little circles inside the boundary of the cell wall. And the cell wall is drawn as a separate structure with separate lines bounding that structure. Okay, however you see it, that's how you have to represent it. Um, okay, so we've got those uh, chloroplasts there. Um, what the other thing was, was that we are clearly showing cell cells as being distinct from each other. Whereas um, if you remember, when we were looking at the 
a low power plan we were grouping all the similar cells together in 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 their separate uh, boundaries in their separate lines but now we have individual cells uh, shown with their individual boundaries so that's important with a high power next the next important thing was not only to show separate uh, or individual cells but to show individual cells and their rough arrangement so we are also concerned with maintaining the arrangement of those cells and how they might be uh, organized in that tissue so that's why it was kind of important to have the guidelines so that we weren't misrepresenting where the cells are um, so down here we have our uh, spongy parenchyma cells with air spaces um, and you can still see some chloroplasts within them interestingly the upper epidermis and the lower epidermis don't have uh, chloroplasts so we can see that okay so we have the spongy parenchyma cells there and we have our lower epidermal cells here okay so that's that's the main things that I wanted to highlight with regards to the labeling uh, I just wanted to highlight also that we are now labeling distinct structures so here we have cellulose cell wall not just the tissue so in the previous diagram we were labeling upper epidermis because that was the tissue in this diagram we are labeling specifically the cell wall okay and this time we are labeling the upper epidermal cell not just the upper epidermis in this case we are labeling palisade parenchyma cells not the palisade parenchyma as a tissue so you see that difference and we are also able to label individual uh, subcellular structures in this case the chloroplasts but again we are labeling the spongy parenchyma cell we are labeling the lower epidermal cell okay so we are not pointing at one of these things and saying that that's representing the whole tissue okay so really as it says in um, uh, OCR's uh, biological drawing guidelines that these two uh, low power plans and high power drawings they complement each other and that is the case so you know we should not be labeling tissues here we should be labeling cells because that's the job of a high power drawing um, and we in the low power plan we are labeling tissues rather than subcellular structures and and cells so that's uh, basically drawing us to a close uh, discussing biological drawings uh, remember guys that if you have any questions I, I am taking questions and uh, hopefully answering them in in their own videos if further ex explanation is required uh, I do want to be able to answer your questions which is very important to me and to your progress so if you have questions leave them in the comment sections or you can uh, also tweet me okay all right guys signing out the next episode will be on looking at the subcellular structures of the cell so uh, the organelles we'll be looking at organelles in the next video uh, in the next episode i'll have that up hopefully as you know as, as soon as i can uh, that should be within the next few days